The Voyager probes just can't be beaten. Although almost 50 years in space have of course left their mark, the veteran probes continue their journey undeterred and have even been known to venture into interstellar space. In the course of their mission, the spacecraft have not only provided us with important new information about this mysterious world beyond our home system, they also gave us one of the most famous space photos of all time, the pale blue dot. And while the award-winning 1990 photograph shows our Earth as a tiny blue dot from a distance of several billion kilometers, it also raises an exciting question. What would we actually see if we turned on the Voyager 1 camera today? It is a mission of superlatives. Launched on August 20th and September 5th, 1977, Voyager 1 and 2 have now put an incredible 24.91 and 20.83 billion kilometers respectively between themselves and the Sun. No other man-made object has ever ventured so far into the depths of space, which is why, from today's perspective, it seems all the more surprising that the space probes were not developed to set such impressive records at all. In fact, the originally predicted lifespan of the identical twin probes was just five years, and they had actually only left Earth to gather new insights into the outer planets of the solar system, which had been little explored until then. But as we now know, NASA was not satisfied with that. After the probes had thoroughly examined Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, those in charge decided to let Voyager 1 and 2 fly on and send them beyond the edge of the solar system. And the fact that the probes have successfully done so and are even still traveling in the mysterious world of interstellar space today is impressive not only from a purely technical point of view. After all, we should not forget that the most remote outposts of humanity, as children of their time, are now at the level of the 1970s, which means nothing other than that their storage capacity is a million times lower than that of our modern cell phones. Furthermore, the transmission data of our current mobile phone connections is almost 40,000 times higher than that of the two ancient probes. Despite this, Voyager 1 and 2 are not creeping through space like old-timers. Instead, they are racing through it at an astonishing speed of 61,000 kilometers per hour. And the fact that such a speed is really necessary to bridge the vast distances of the cosmos is shown by the following. Although Voyager 1 had already set course for the outskirts of the solar system in the fall of 1980, it took until the summer of 2012 before it reached them. More precisely, this means the heliopause, the outermost zone of the heliosphere in which the solar wind, together with its magnetic fields, is effective. How does NASA stay in contact with Voyager 1? Voyager 1 has now spent a whopping 17,374 days in space. But how do you even maintain contact with a probe that is now almost 25 billion kilometers away from the Sun? Well, first of all, it takes a great deal of patience. After all, a signal sent from Earth takes about 23 hours to reach Voyager 1. Of course, this means that almost another full day passes before NASA experts receive the probe's response. That is, if it actually arrives on Earth, that is. In fact, communication with Voyager 1 has cost those responsible a lot of nerves in the recent past. The last time this happened was about five months ago, when the probe was supposed to switch on just one of its heaters, but instead activated a protective mechanism that disabled the X-band radio transmitter. To restore the connection, NASA ultimately had to resort to the S-band transmitter, a transmitter that had not been used in 43 years. Fortunately, however, NASA engineers were able to find the weaker signal from this transmitter and maintain contact with Voyager 1. But how does that actually work in detail? Well, with the help of the Deep Space Network. This is a global network of radio antennas that has had to be expanded several times for the mission. In fact, the Voyager program is one of the few projects that still requires the continued operation of the colossal 70-meter antennas and the associated receiving technology although this will no longer be necessary for much longer. As soon as the Voyager mission ends, the era of the monster antennas will also be over, and experts assume that this will be the case by the middle of the next decade due to the steadily increasing distance to the probes. The bottom line is that the already enormous distance increases by another 540 million kilometers every year. But that does not mean that the future loss of radio contact will also mean the end of Voyager's mission. 
because unless something unexpected happens, the probes will still be flying through space when the time of humanity may well have long since passed. And of course, the same will also apply to the special passenger that each spacecraft carries on board. This is called the Voyager Golden Record and embodies nothing less than a message to aliens. More specifically, it consists of data plates with image and audio information about our blue home planet and its inhabitants. But whether revealing ourselves in this way was a clever move is, of course, a completely different matter. Stephen Hawking, for example, warned that a hostile civilization could use the information served up on a silver platter to prepare a devastating invasion. So far, however, the dreaded War of the Worlds has not materialized, so we still have time and opportunity to take a look at the further path of Voyager 1. In about 300 years, the probe will first enter the Oort Cloud. Postulated 75 years ago by Jan Hendrik Oort, Voyager 1 will then find itself in the region of origin of long-period comets. However, since this spherical, shell-shaped collection of objects is located up to 1.6 light-years from the Sun, and Voyager 1 has not yet covered even one light day despite all the decades in space, it will take about 30,000 years before it has completely crossed the Oort cloud. Another 10,000 years later, it will pass the star, Gliese 445, at a distance of 1.6 light years. And conveniently, the celestial body will even move a little towards its visitor. While the star is currently still 17 light years away from the Sun, it will have moved to 3.45 light years from our source of warmth and life by then. What the Voyager 1 camera would show us today. It cannot be said that the Voyager probes did not extensively document their excursion into space. After all, we have them to thank for around 67,000 images of our solar system, and with that, a literally new view of our home world. Thanks to the space probes, we now know, for example, that Saturn is by no means the only planet in the solar system to be adorned with rings, and that there are moons out there in orbits that researchers had never heard of before this mission. However, the full Voyager truth also includes the fact that the last probe photo was taken almost 35 years ago. In fact, we have not received any further snapshots since the aforementioned pale blue dot. Taken at the suggestion of Carl Sagan, and subsequently named one of the best photos in space science of all time, the pale blue dot reminds us once again how tiny we are in the cosmic big picture. No wonder, since after all, the image shows us our earthly home from a distance of 6 billion kilometers. But when will we actually be provided with new images? Well, unfortunately not at all, because in reality the cameras on the two probes were switched off long ago. But of course, our curiosity is not easily thwarted by some deactivated cameras. So, what would Voyager 1 see if it turned around and took a last look back at Earth? Would the probe be able to see anything at all? After all, it is now not only 6, but an impressive 25 billion kilometers away from the object of desire. Now, since it's unfortunately not possible to answer this photo question with real images, we have to turn to the realm of theories, or more precisely, to the realm of simulations. In fact, there are people who have already simulated Voyager's view of Earth. And although these are not real images, they still make a deep impression. According to this, the Sun, our gigantic host star with a diameter of 1.4 million kilometers, is no more than a tiny, dimmed pinhead. The situation is even more meager when it comes to planets. After all, even the mighty Jupiter which in theory would provide space for over 1,300 Earths, can only be guessed at. Apart from the tiny, pale pixels that form our home system, the view back would be characterized above all by an expansive darkness. But isn't that somehow impressive too? Everything that moves us, occupies us, and keeps us busy in our everyday lives is, seen from a different perspective, no more than a collection of tiny cosmic dust grains and yet, this is exactly what Voyager 1 would see today. And to make sure you don't miss our new videos, just click the subscribe button. We'd love for you to join our community now, so you'll never miss a new post again. We'll see you soon.